This is Find Your Dream Job, the podcast that helps you get hired, have the career you want, and make a difference in life. I'm your host, Mac Pritchard. I'm also the founder of Max List. It's a job board in the Pacific Northwest that helps you find a fulfilling career. Every Wednesday, I talk to a different expert about the tools you need to get the work you want. Find Your Dream Job is brought to you by Top Resume. Top Resume has helped more than 400,000 professionals land more interviews and get hired faster. Get a free review of your resume today. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Do you struggle with promoting yourself when you talk to a hiring manager? Today's guest says if you want to stand out from your competitors, you need to understand and tell employers what you do best. Gregory Heller is here to discuss how to talk about your strengths in a job interview. He's the Senior Associate Director of MBA Career Management at the Foster School of Business at the University of Washington. Gregory also hosts the podcast, Conversations on Careers and Professional Life. He joins us from Seattle, Washington. Well, Gregory, here's where I want to start. Do many job seekers struggle with talking about their strengths in a job interview? I find that many job seekers talk about what they've done. And what they've done doesn't necessarily highlight how they did it well. So, yes, I think that many fail to really articulate the strengths that contributed to their past successes. Why do people, well, I don't want to use the word fail at this, but why do they struggle with it, Gregory? You know, sometimes I think people get into this mindset that they're being interrogated rather than interviewed, and that puts them into a, into a mind state where they want to get all the details right, and they focus on the details of, again, what they did rather than focusing on how they did it. Now, I work with a lot of people who are really trying to pivot careers. So they may have been a software engineer or a QA tester, or maybe they were a consultant, and now they want to be a product manager or a finance manager or a consultant. And the things that they did in the past, the actual day-to-day what they did, don't really transfer directly over to what they want to do. So what's critically important is to articulate how they did whatever they did in the past, how they did that well. And that's where strengths come in. What advice do you have for a listener who's trying to understand how to tell the story of what they've done in the past in a way that explains the how rather than the what? Yeah, that's a great question. So what I typically tell people to do is to take a step back and to think about what people have told them they do well. Think back to annual reviews, compliments that you've gotten from clients, customers, or colleagues. Those often provide some keys to the how more than the what. And then the next thing is to consider using some type of assessment. Now, at the Foster School, we use the Clifton Strengths from Gallup. So all of our students go through and get at least their top five Clifton strengths. And this gives us some language that we can use across the board with those students. I've also used it with other folks privately outside of the university. And it is really helpful because so often the things that we're really good at come so naturally that we often miss them. We don't realize that that is what sets us apart. I've always been really good at storytelling. But it took the self-awareness that that's actually something that I'm good at and other people aren't as good at to really understand how I can leverage that, how I can lean into it and invest in it as a strength that I can then showcase with the people that I work with. There's a lot to unpack there. Strengths, knowing your strengths, uh, doing self-assessment, telling your story in an effective, strategic way. I, w- I want to explore each of those points. Before we do that, Gregory, I just want to go back to our topic, which is why is it so important to tell employers about your strengths? Why does that matter so much? If we get bogged down in the details of of past projects, it can be easy to miss how we are going to succeed in something. That typically, typically, we don't want to make a lateral move. We don't want to go from being, you know, uh, let's say it's product manager to product manager just as at a different company. We often want to be making a move that moves us up or that moves us out into something completely different. So we need to really 
um, understand how we have been successful, how we can apply what we do well in a new setting and for the hiring manager to understand that, oh, this is a person who is really good at building relationships or this candidate has exceptional collaboration skills. Uh, the, the way this person approaches problems is creative and unbounded by, uh, the conventional wisdom within an organization. That's the kind of person that I want. So if we can articulate those things that we're really good at, not just that, oh, I was able to manage this project within 10% of its budget and timeline. It doesn't tell us how we manage the project. You know, if we manage that project because we built strong relationships, we motivated the team, we kept people on track by checking in with them and unblocking, you know, anything that was uh, stymieing them. Those are things that we can do in other contexts, in another role. And they're really clues to how people succeed. Well, let's talk about how to know your strengths. And in your experience, you work with so many students and graduates at mm -hmm. your university. Do most job seekers have a good understanding of, of what their strengths are? I would say that most people that I've worked with have a good idea of one or two, the things that they are most good at, yet they still often fail to articulate those when they begin preparing for interviews. It's when we get beyond those, again, one or two things that we really feel like are our, our superpower that we may not notice as well. Like one of the things for myself, I mentioned earlier, storytelling, communication. I mean, I've worked in that business. That's been how I've made my money. But some of the things that I didn't recognize as much were the way that I understand individual people and tailor my communication to those individual people or to understand what they need and then be able to give them what they need, find for them the thing, the specific thing that they need. And when I became aware of that skill, I was able to really lean into and develop it more and to uh, just leverage it more. So I think that when you get beyond, again, these top things that you're aware of, there are some additional ones that have often contributed to your past successes. And by examining, really unpacking, you know, okay, here's a, an accomplishment that's on my resume. How did I make that happen? What was it about me that made that success that the person next to me would have done differently? So those are some ways to begin to identify what those strengths are that set you apart so that you can really highlight them in an interview setting. Those are excellent questions. And you also mentioned earlier the value of using a self-assessment tool like the Clifton Strengths Finder. Um, and talking to your colleagues and looking at past reviews, any other tips for getting good at self-awareness and self-assessment, Gregory? You know, I think w without doing, you know, a paid assessment and the Clifton Strengths is not particularly expensive. So I think it's a worthwhile investment and I don't get any kickbacks, trust me. But, um, what I would say is even talking to people that you know, friends and family, sitting down and asking them, what do you think I do better than anyone else? What do you think sets me apart from the rest? And you could do this with past colleagues or current colleagues. You know, right now, as we record this, a lot of people in the tech industry are finding out that they're going to be looking for new jobs. Um, you can take the time to ask your colleagues around you, you know, what do you think I did really well? What do you think set me apart? Um, so that's a way to engage other people. Uh, and I think that, you know, if we take like the lessons of folks like uh, Wayne Baker and Adam Grant, you know, you just need to ask for help and people are willing to help you. That can really give us more of a sense of the things that other people see in us that we don't even see in ourselves. This is terrific, Gregory. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Gregory Heller will continue to share his advice and how to talk about your strengths in a job interview. Stay with us. Your resume is a terrific tool for talking about your strengths. If you're uncertain how to do this, go to maxlist.org slash top resume. A professional writer at Top Resume will review your resume for free. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. 
You'll get detailed feedback you can use to showcase your strengths and tell your career story. Or you can hire Top Resume to do this work for you. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Now, let's get back to the show. We're back in the MaxList studio. I'm talking with Gregory Heller. He's the Senior Associate Director of MBA Career Management at the Foster School of Business at the University of Washington. Gregory also hosts the podcast, Conversations on Careers and Professional Life. And he joins us from Seattle, Washington. Gregory, before the break, we were talking about how to talk about your strengths in a job interview. Um, and we talked about the value of of self-awareness and, and self-assessment. Um, and you touched on this, but I, I want to just make sure we explore this point more. Um, how important is it to understand how your strengths help you be successful? Tell us more about that, Gregory. I like to think that when you are in that flow state in a job, you are performing well um, and things feel like they're coming, not easily, not just completely simple, but they're coming naturally. And when things are coming naturally like that, it can be hard to recognize what are the ingredients to your success. So when you're thinking about a new job at a new organization, you really want to think about what are the ingredients that you're going to bring to success in that new role at that new organization. So that's where I think it's really key to unpack what made you successful to really analyze that in your past accomplishments and then think about how you map those strengths to the new challenges of the new role by doing a close read on the job description, by looking at your notes from hopefully the informational interviews that you've conducted with people at that organization so that when you are in that job interview, you are really thinking about what does this person need to hear from me? to feel confident in making the decision to recommend me for hire or to hire me. And if you articulate to them how you will succeed in this new role, it will be easier for them to make that decision. So you walk into the room with the self-awareness that has allowed you to understand what your strengths are and you're prepared to discuss them. How, Gregory, do you see successful candidates get that understanding of what matters to an interviewer so that they can make those connections between what they're good at and what the employer needs. So there's um, two or three things. One that we really recommend people do is informational interviews. These are conversations with people at the organization who you may know. They might be a friend of a friend. And that can help you really understand what isn't written on the job description that the organization really cares about. Also, looking at that organization's website for what their values are, what their leadership principles may be, listening to interviews, uh, you know, if these are large organizations, interviews with senior executives and how they talk about what they find valuable in their people at the organization. Um, And then practice is so critical. And when I think about The job interviews that I've gone into, and most of my jobs have come through uh, personal networks, so I've had that warm introduction. But I think about going into those job interviews, I I actually didn't do a lot of preparation. I'm going to be honest. So don't do as I did and do as I say. I, I think I really relied on my ability to tell a good story, my communication skills, to in the moment articulate how I was going to be successful in that organization. But I think for a lot of people, taking the time to practice with someone, a friend, a colleague, a family member, a coach, you know, work with a coach if if you can, I think it's very valuable. You will go into that interview with so much more confidence. And if you understand what has made you successful in the past, I like to think about Amy Cuddy's book, Presence, and some of the studies in that book, which talked about priming, the idea that you can prime yourself to uh, appear more confident and have a greater impact on the people you're speaking to by thinking about 
reliving in your mind successes that you've had in the past. And if you do that in a way that really highlights what those strengths are, you go into that interview with more confidence. If you're practiced and you know how you're going to articulate your strengths and how you're going to answer the questions you're likely to get, you're going to feel more confident. And if you come across as more confident, that's going to have an impact on the interviewer. What are some of your specific practice tips? Do you uh, have people talk to a mirror and respond to possible questions? Um, do you have them role play with, you, you mentioned perhaps working with a family member or a friend. What's been most effective in your coaching of the, of the students at your graduate school? I think the most important thing is uh, doing it with someone. Now, once you have practiced with an indiv- with, with someone else and you've gotten some feedback from that person about what really resonated with them, uh, what was too much detail, that sort of thing, then you can practice on your own. And sure, you can practice in front of a mirror, but I mean, that's like 19th century technology right there. We've got so many fantastic tools available to us from LinkedIn's interview prep to udly.ai. Uh, which I'm sure we'll put in the show notes. It's a fantastic tool for recording yourself and getting some just objective me- metrics on your presentation. And how much preparation, how much practice do you recommend? Uh, you have an interview coming up. It might be an hour. Uh, are you going to spend three or four hours getting ready or what's been, what's worked for your students? Yeah. So yeah, it might be an hour, but it also might be the next three to five years of your life. Right. So I think you want to, if you really want the job, you need to be realistic with yourself, how much time you are going to need to practice. And I think it's very individual because some people are naturally more talented with communication and they're more comfortable in terms of self-confidence and other people need more time. But I think that, um, you know, typically I would say to someone at a baseline, you need probably a two to one preparation. Now, if you're in an active job search where you are applying and interviewing at a lot of jobs, some of that preparation is going to do, I don't want to say double duty, triple duty, quadruple duty, right? If you're practicing, you know, how you answer, tell me about yourself or a time you failed, those kinds of questions, they're going to be useful across all the interviews that you're in. So it pays dividends, basically. In an active job search, the preparation that you do pays dividends across all of the interviews that you will uh, go on. A final recommendation you have for how to talk about your strengths in a job interview is to do an after-action review after you talk to an employer. What's the value of doing this, Gregory, and, and what's the best time to do it? Yeah. I'm glad you asked. So the value is this. Uh, humans have a negativity bias, right? So the longer you get from that interview, the further in time away from the interview, uh, and you don't hear something positive or negative, you're going to think that you bombed it, right? More and more. Oh, I should have said this. Oh, man, why didn't I tell them that? And you're going to have a really negative feeling about that interview. The moment you walk out of that interview is the moment at which you will have the most accurate recollection or impression of how that interview went. So I suggest to people, even when you're in like a multi-interview loop, like four interviews of 15 minutes between each interview, take a couple of those 15 minutes to say what went really well. Like, where do I feel like I did really well? Where do I feel like I need to shore up my performance in the next interview? What questions did I get asked, you know, specific questions, and then what follow-up questions? And did I nail the key points that I wanted to make going into this? What my strengths are, why I want this position, how I'm going to perform well in this position, right? So if you take the the time to say, like, did I hit those points, you're going to have an accurate representation of how that went. You're going to be able to go into that next interview, whether it's in 10 minutes or the next day or a week away with a clear idea of 
what you need to change or what you need to double down on in that next interview. So that's why I say to do that after action review. It can really help you improve your performance. And uh, not that I'm a big sports person, but using sports analogies really helps here. You know, you're not going to go to the driving range with a blindfold on and just hit balls and not see where they go. You are going to look at, did that ball go to the left? Did it go to the right? Did it fall short? Did I hit behind it? Did I hit over the top of it? And you're going to correct on the next swing. So that's really what I'm getting at here is the opportunity to review your performance and course correct. Well, it's been a terrific conversation, Gregory. Now, tell us what's next for you. Well, as I alluded to earlier, you know, the news is full of reports of layoffs or downsizing in big tech. I like to think of it as a bit more of a correction because if you look to a couple of years ago, we're still uh, these companies are still bigger than they were then. But at the same time, we're seeing so much investment in clean energy, clean tech, uh, decarbonization, renewables, electric vehicles. I think that there's tremendous growth in the job market there. And I really look forward to helping my students and others get connected with companies in those spaces to uh, work on what I think is the greatest challenge that has faced uh, humanity, not just in my lifetime, but that is our getting off of uh, fossil fuels and addressing the climate crisis. Well, uh, thanks for sharing that, Gregory. I know that listeners can learn more about your work uh, uh, by visiting your podcast uh, that is Conversations on Careers and Professional Life. The URL is conversationsoncareers.com. We'll be sure to include that in the show notes as well as the website article about your interview. And you also invite people to connect with you on LinkedIn. And as always, I hope they'll, uh, if they do reach out to you, mention they heard you on the show. Now, Gregory, given all the great advice you've shared today, what's the one thing you want a listener to remember about how to talk about your strengths in a job interview? Write down the three to five things that you think you uniquely bring to that job and make sure that you have a way that you can articulate those things, strengths, in your interview answers. Make sure you never miss an episode of Find Your Dream Job. Subscribe to our free podcast newsletter. You'll get information about our guests and transcripts of every show. Go to maxlist.org slash newsletters. Again, that's maxlist.org slash newsletters. Next week, our guest will be Mark Cacciatani. He's a nonprofit human resources consultant, a speaker, and the director of people and culture at Oregon Public Broadcasting. Equity at work involves issues like equal pay, opportunities for promotion, and fairness in the workplace. So before you say yes to a job offer, you want to understand how an employer approaches equity. Join us next Wednesday when Mark Cacciatani and I talk about how to know where a company is in its equity journey. Until next time, thanks for letting us help you find your dream job. This show is produced by Max List. Susan Thornton Hoff schedules our guests and writes our newsletter. Lisa Kislin-Barry Anderson manages our social media. Our sound engineer is Matt Fiorillo. Ryan Morrison at Podfly Productions edits the show. Dawn Mole creates our transcripts, and our music is by Freddie Trujillo. This is Mac Pritchard. See you next week.